Good morning, everyone. Hello. Okay. So, you know me, I like to just get started with our lives. I hate hanging around. Uh, so I'm just going to get started. As always, of course, this is being recorded. It's going to be saved to the page so that you can watch it later. But good morning. My name is Elise. I'm the owner and the artist behind the Painted Brush & Co. We are located in Bendigo, Victoria. We are open today. Uh, I know it's Sunday, but we're having our birthday sale. So I will be open today, 10 till 12 for all of our locals. We're at 37 High Street, Eagle Hawk, and our website's in the description of this video and all over our page, so you can find us. But, and all the products that I'm talking about today are on my website. I stock the entire Pure Eco range so that you can find them. All right, let's get into it. So, these bedside tables I've been working on, it's, it's been about a month and a half. <laughs> Nothing is fast around here. <laughs> Um, my average, my average time is about three months for most pieces, even the ones that really aren't complicated. Um, just because I have so many other things going on and then I get sidetracked and I start the next piece and it doesn't go well. Um, but these ones are finally almost done. Thank goodness. Uh, they've been painted. One has been completely sealed. The other one has just been painted, but I wanted to show you the difference between the chalk paint and then just as it is and then once it's sealed as well and then today we are of course talking about our most popular product which is the pure eco stain and glaze and i'm going to be applying it to the top of this bed so i, I get a lot of questions about it um and nobody believes me when i tell you how easy it is to use so i thought i've been trying to do more lives when we we're in lockdown it was a lot easier but now that we're open a little bit harder but i'm trying i'm gonna aim for like most weekends to do a live but don't hold me to it um but i'm trying to do as many videos as i can on all the different products obviously i've got a lot of new customers at the moment particularly a lot of new locals which is absolutely amazing so i'm trying to show you all the different products um and pure eco standing glaze nearly everybody who walks in the door walks out with it and nearly every single online order includes it so it is by far our most popular product. We've now sold over 200 pots of it, um, which is just, it blows my mind every, every single time I look at that number. Like, I don't know how we've done it, but it's an incredible product and Pure Eco should be incredibly proud of it. So let's start with our paint. So these bedsides, super simple. They were this standard brown color originally. To prep, all I did was cleaned really, really well. Regardless of what the piece is, the one thing that you will always, always do is clean really well. Hot, soapy water. You can use Pure Eco's Lemon Myrtle Cleaner. You can use Authentico's Omni Clean. You can use dish soap. It's really up to you and what you prefer. Um, these ones, I think I used the Lemon Myrtle Cleaner because that's what, I'm, what I had on hand. But look, if I've only got dish dish soap on hand, I'm gonna use that. Um, but it doesn't matter what you use, hot soapy water, as hot as you can stand it generally, obviously don't hurt yourself. Hot soapy water, get all the dirt, get all that grime off. Um, inside as well in these, where the drawers sit, get along those runners as well. You'll be surprised how much dirt and dust builds up on there. And even though you're not going to be painting those, you don't wanna be having that in your house. So clean that up. Once you've cleaned, uh, well, once I cleaned, I have uh, scruff sanded with 80 grit sandpaper all over. That's just going to help with my adhesion. Scruff sanding, you are not breaking through the surface. You are just giving the paint something to stick to, okay? So you're just scratching the surface, giving the paint something to stuck to, stick to, and my paint has stuck beautifully. And then I painted two coats of Pure Rico chalk finish in the color Reef which is this really, really pretty blue. Um, I've previously used Colonial, so, um, so I thought I'd do a quick comparison, and I might even, do I have them both painted down here? Hang on, I might be able to show you the two different system paints. I can, here you go. This would be easier. Right, so this is Reef in, oh, I don't have both painted, but that's all right. Oh, hang on. Yes, I do. <laughs> I've got it painted on the drawer. All right. Reefs on the drawer. This is Colonial Chalk Finish here. 
So that's the two colors next to each other. I did have somebody ask how different they were. So that's Colonial and Reef. So Reef's a little bit lighter. This set, although I don't do custom, I do have, a, I don't do custom work. I've got a customer looking for a set like this in this color. Um, so I've said, I was always going to do it in a blue. Um, I was originally going to go for Inkwa, which is a really dark navy, but I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna do it in this. It will sell regardless if you decide that you don't want it. It's no skin off my neck. So I'm doing it like this, but she did want it a little bit darker. So I've white waxed and then I have black waxed over it. The white, it came up a little bit too light and bright and I wanted it a little bit grungier and a little bit darker. So I've then gone over with the black wax. Why am I still holding that? So this is unsealed, just two coats. Um, I've had a few questions about brush strokes. With the chalk finish, you are naturally going to have more brush strokes, that's, that's normal. Um, at any time that you're using a brush, you're going to have brush strokes. So that's two coats and I have very lightly sanded it after I finished. Um, it was quite a warm day when I painted this and the paint was drying like crazy. Um, it's, we've had the weather's all over the place at the moment and it gets quite warm in here when it's warm out there, it warms up in here quite quickly. So I did give this a light sand. I don't always, it is up to you whether or not you sand between or after coats. Okay, so that's that. And this one has been waxed and you can see it's got a very, very slight shine. So it's been waxed with white wax and then um, waxed with black wax. So you've got the two. I don't like going, or I don't always like going directly in with the black wax. Um, first just because it can make it look a lot darker and that paint's going to grab that wax as well so you're going to see a lot more of the black. I like going in black wax after white or even just going straight in with our pewter wax um, because I like that sort of grey sheen rather than just going black or just going white so it's just have a play around with the waxes. Um, they come in the white and the black is available in the liquid wax and in the um, traditional beeswax as well so you can get it in both. But here's two of them, so unsealed, sealed, so you can see that difference there. Now don't, <laughs> I had a message yesterday of someone using um, Inkwell, which is our dark, dark navy, panicked because it was very, it dries quite light with your blues, your greens, your pinks a little bit, but your blues and your greens in particular they often dry a lot lighter in the chalk finish. They dry a lot lighter than what they will be once they are sealed. So don't panic, it is completely normal. It's just how the pigments work. But once you seal them, you're going to reveal the true color. Um, <clears throat> obviously mine, my reef here that has been sealed, because I've got the white and the black wax over it, it's not 100% the true color because I've added color on top of it. But if I was to seal it with a clear wax, I would be showing the true color, okay? Uh, with the silk finish, because it's got the built-in top coat, you are not going to see, um, <clears throat> sorry, um, you're, not, you're not going to have that difference in color. It's going to dry the color, the final color that it's going to be, okay? So with the chalk, just be aware that the, the darker colors, uh, black, the carbon doesn't really, the lead doesn't really, but the blues and the greens, often dry lighter until you've sealed them. So be aware. I'll do some more videos using the chalk as well. Um, all of a sudden everyone's purchasing chalk, which is absolutely fantastic. It's my favorite paint to use. Um, so I will, as I keep painting, I've got a few pieces coming up that I'm going to do a lot more full tutorials on all the different elements as well. Uh, let me know if there's anything in particular that you want to see. And I'll do lots of little short ones that I'll put up and then I'll put up a full one onto YouTube as well for those who want to watch the full flip to start to finish. Okay, so that's our paint. So we've been painted. So one bedside I still need to seal, the other one's sealed. Today I'm up to staining the top. So we've got this absolutely beautiful timber that is really, really gorgeous. This took so much sanding. It was, the finish on this was incredibly thick. Uh, it was a good half an hour per bedside table. Plus I stripped these as well. It was not coming off in a hurry. 
Um, sometimes you have pieces like that. It's unfortunate when it happens, but it does happen occasionally. But well and truly worth the effort to um, to sand it back because I love the timber, so I'm excited to see it stay today. Um, for these edge bits that you have, there's still a little bit of stain left in there. I always get asked what's the best way to get it out. You can try stripping it to get it out, but oftentimes the and the easiest sometimes the, um, the easiest way to do it is just to fold over a piece of sandpaper. Yes, it's going to be hard on your hands. Fold a piece of sandpaper around like a paddle pop stick and just rub it along that joint and, and it will come out. And you'll often find on the joins, it's so, it's not on the joins, on the little lips and the edges, you actually find that the stain's quite thick because it sort of sinks into those bits. I don't mind a little bit of darkness around it, so I'm not always really particular about getting every bit of stain out. Um, but if you are particular, obviously, take a few minutes and take it out. Um, and I like that little bit of a shadow line that it gives as well. So, let me pop those back. On, and that one, how are we going for time? Right, I said that I'm opening at 10. <laughs> Knowing my luck, nobody will show up because I don't normally open on a Sunday, but I'm still going to try and finish this by 10. All right, so we've got Pure Eco Stain and Glaze Carob. This is a water-based, um, looks like I'm opening this one now. That wasn't my plan. Um, <laughs> this is a water-based stain and glaze. So the stain is for timber. The glaze element of it is for overpaint. You can use it overpaint just like I could have used this over the drawers um, to create that same finish, okay? So you can use it over both. And I've got my little sample board here, which I do need to label. <laughs> Everyone reminds me when they come in that I need to label it. This is our little board. So the bottom, each of these, that one's been painted in carbon. Um, all of these have been painted in um, just basin blocker. That's just what I had on hand in the white basin blocker. And then I have applied the stain and glaze over it. The stain and glaze, when it's applied over paint and it's fantastic over decorative elements, because it's gonna sink into all those little grooves and it's going to um, really give some emphasis and some grunge and it's really, really beautiful. So that's all of our colors there. And I'll hold that, the camera's a bit far away so I can't hold it too close. I might actually take, I don't think I've taken like a proper close up photo of this. So I might take a proper close up photo and I'll pop it on my website for you as well. So we've got all the colors, there's seven colors. Um, so we've got Midnight, which is our black, and this is all one coat over pine as well. I did it over pine because it's most commonly common wood that you guys do have. We do have some oaks, etc. as well, but pine, everyone has pine furniture that they're doing up. So I thought it was a good representation. So we've got Midnight, which is our black, and with these, the more coats that you apply, the darker it's going to be. Then we've got Storm, which is a grey, I really, really like these two. Black always goes really well with greens. Um, gray goes really well with anything. And then we've got, what was our next color name? Sable, which is this really dark chocolatey brown. I have used Sable a lot. I've actually gone through a couple of jars of it already. It's absolutely beautiful. It is amazing against blacks and grays um, because it's so rich and deep. Um, and then we've got carob. I need to label these because I always confuse carob and sepia. <laughs> and then we've got sepia, which is this one. Driftwood. And then whisper on the end in the white. Okay, so driftwood and whisper. Um, whisper is our white. And if you were doing um, pine, furniture which if you cl just clear coat it it's often going to come back with that orange and that yellow so going in with a coat of our whisper will um, neutralize a lot of that yellowness and the orangeness of the timber so whisper um, is a really really good color to use if you want to keep it quite natural looking but you want to just dull that orange a little bit as well driftwood's also really nice because it's such a pale brown and it can neutralize as well of course, these are all water-based. So if you find 
do a little test patch. If you find it's too dark or too too much colour straight out of the jar, you can decant some and um, thin it down with some water as well if you need to. Um, so that's those. I'm using, for to apply my um, stain, I use these sponge applicators. I don't... Um, I don't really use a brush at all unless my timber's like really, really rough, like what it is on my counter. That's really rough sawn wood. Um, but for most furniture, by the time you finish sanding it, it's going to be really smooth. So I use a sponge applicator. I find I get a much nicer finish. I don't get any brush strokes. Uh, and it's just, it's easier. Um, if I can use a sponge to apply something, I'm going to use a sponge. And then I also use, <coughs> I better stick this on here, otherwise I won't remember what it is. Um, I also use a mister bottle. You can use a spray bottle. If you've got a spray bottle, use a spray bottle. I love the mister bottles. They're only new, but, and I've never used one until recently, but I really, really, really like them. Um, and I like the little bit more control that they give me as well. So, and I will show you a video painting and using the spray bottle to help you get your coverage um, and to help you move the paint around as well. So I will do that at some point because I have been asked for that. Now I've got a little sample pot here, but there's not enough left in it. So we're gonna do this. So when you apply your stain, you can apply in any direction, but typically I like to stay with the grain, uh, particularly if I'm doing a larger piece. If you stick with the grain, you're less likely to end up with streaks um, and with runs in odd, odd ways. Uh, obviously, this is quite a small bedside table, so I'm going to do the whole surface in one go. If it is a really large piece, I do try to go from, say, one edge all the way to the next, but if you can't for whatever reason, sort of just try and work quickly and keep a damp edge, and you'll see what I mean in a second. So I don't apply any sort of primer. I don't... Um, you can get, like, wood conditioners and whatnot. I don't apply anything like that to my timber. I just stain directly onto it. I've never ever felt the need. Uh, if my timber is, if it's an old piece and I'm finding that it's very, very dry, then I often will spray it a little bit, just mist it a bit um, as I go. And I find sometimes that just helps that stain move around a little bit. It's up to you, like, like everything, it comes down to practice have a play around, even grab just some old bits of timber and have a play around and um, experience the products for yourselves. I can tell you how to use it, but until you've used it and had a play around with it and worked out what you like and what you don't like, um, yeah, I don't know where that sentence is going, but that's, that's where it went. <laughs> Sometimes that happens. My brain's not quite there yet this morning. Right, sponge applicator. You can decant, you can use straight out of the jar up to you. My jar's brand new, it is full. Um, I'm not going to show you because I'm most likely going to spill it. Sponge applicator. You don't want, where aren't we? You don't want heaps and heaps and heaps on your sponge. And I'll show you, that's a lot, that's too much. You can even see where it's running. So I sort of just dip it in and wipe most of it off. And I'm actually just going to bring the camera in a little bit closer. So I really want you to see what we're doing. Oh, sorry, I know. It's so annoying when people move cameras when you're trying to watch things. Are you almost all in the picture? There you go, all right, you're almost all in the picture. Okay, so I'm trying not to get paint on my clothes today. Okay, so sponge, my sponge is dry as well. It's up to you if you use it wet. I've used it wet, I've used it dry, it doesn't matter which. Uh, my timber's nice and smooth. It's clean. Obviously, after you finish sanding, make sure you give it a clean. You don't want all that dust hanging around because it could, could impact on your sponge. But starting from one edge, going to the other. I tend to do the top and then I go around with the edges and then I just sort of clean it up. Up to you how you do it. Just work methodically. Starting from one edge. Let me make sure I'm in your picture. Starting from one edge. And you're just going to wipe it all the way across. And I just sort of keep working it back and forth and you'll instantly have beautiful, beautiful colour. Just like that. And you'll sort of notice as you run out of stain 
on your sponge, nothing's gonna come off. So again, just a little bit on there. And this, the stain and glaze works really, really well when you keep a damp edge. And when you're working with it, if you find that it is drying, you can come in with this spray bottle and you can reactivate it very, very easily. Obviously, if you've left it dry overnight, you're not really going to be able to reactivate it. But if you just sort of keep going, and I'll show you, you, you can spray the surface spray sponge, but just a light mist over it will reactivate it. And then you can spread that around that little bit more. And I just realized I did have the colors wrong on my board. This is carob, the other one was sepia when I was showing the board. I always get them wrong. I need to label it. I've labeled everything else in here, but I haven't labeled that, have I? So just keep spreading it out. You just wanna try and get it as even as you can. You don't wanna sort of leave it, start down this end and then come back because you'll end up, you will have a line and sometimes that can be really, really hard to hide. Um, and that's why when you do really big pieces, you wanna be making sure that you sort of go all the way from one edge to the other rather than stopping halfway. It's as hard as it can be sometimes, particularly for like a dining table. It's just something that you do need to try and do. Otherwise you will end up with um, lines. So one edge to the other. And you can layer these with, um, oops, you can layer this with the other stains as well if you feel the need. So I've done that quite a lot. Now this bit here, I just sprayed the timber. I should have told you what I was doing. I just sprayed the timber of this bit first before applying just to show you. If you get the timber quite wet, obviously that's going to interact, the water's going to interact with your stain. So you're going to, um, it's going to lighten it as well. But it's up to you how you apply it. Again, just play around with it. Have a go a few different ways. Obviously this is a set, so whatever I do to one, I probably should do to the other, which I will. The other ones, I can probably show you the other one too. How are we going for time? Oh, I've got heaps of time. I'll show you the other one as well. Okay today so we'll do the other one and then I like to go around the edges you can't see what I'm doing I'm sorry so the edges and this is where I like the sponge as well because it will get into that little crevice all the way along the edge just like that and at this point I'm just using what's left on my sponge along this front That look I'm actually using the camera because I can't see it properly. How are we? If you find that you have run out on your sponge, you can get more obviously. This side as well. I'm loving this colour. Yeah, there's no none left on that. I'm loving this colour against the reef. So for those who have just joined us, this bedside has been painted with pure eco chalk finish in the colour reef. All of these products are 20% off as well until midnight tonight. It is our fourth birthday sale as the Painted Brushing Co. I've been doing this for a long time, but four years ago, this weekend actually, I um, decided to start stocking paints and take what was just a hobby to, oh, I took all of our savings and turned it into a business. I was absolutely nuts, but it has been the best four years ever. I could not have imagined that we'd be where we are today. So once you've done your edges, um, if you find that you've ended up with sort of dark spots along these edges, along the top edges, because you've sort of overlapped a little bit, come with your spray bottle, either spray your um, sponge or spray that. I'm just gonna spray my sponge a little bit, not heaps. And then you're sort of just going to wipe it back and forth. And this is going to blend out all those edges for you. I still remember doing the first lot. It was one of the, I hadn't done many lives, but way back when, um, doing my first live, showing off the stain and glaze. 
back uh, when it was a Lysential Botanics product before Purico brought it. Um, that was such a long time ago, but I still remember using it and being absolutely blown away by how incredible this product is. And Purico have just improved on it and the colors are so, so beautiful. And I'm so lucky to get to use them and to represent them because this is just so pretty. Um, I know you can't really, the camera's doing an all right job today as well. And I apologize for the echoing. I know Facebook tends to pick up all of the echoing. I'm in a really old building, but I have got the doors shut, so it's not too bad, but there we go. Right, super, super easy. So if I wasn't demoing it, that would have taken me all of two minutes, okay? Super easy to apply. Because it's water-based, there are no vox in it, which means there's no nasty smell. You will get some stains that are oil-based and they absolutely reek. Um, this has got no smell, okay? I'm in a closed building. I don't have any fans on. I don't have any ventilation in here other than just like the air blowing underneath the door. There's no smell at all. Um, and it's safe to use. And I use this around my kids and I don't have any concerns. So let me see if I can bring this closer for you. So you can still see the grain, which is what we want to see. And I will let this dry. And then this afternoon, I'm going to come in with some hemp oil. And I will, um, I'll come in with some hemp oil. Let me tilt you back up. And I will wet sand this. Uh, and I showed you a video, if you scroll back to my page, I think it was last week, I posted a video wet sanding um, with the oil. But I will do another video when I do these anyway for you. Super, super easy. Um, and it's going to give me a really nice finish. It's going to hydrate the timber as well. It's going to bring out the grain a little bit more. And it's going to make this look really, really, really beautiful. Uh, any questions? Hi, Monica. This is Carob. It's the light brown. I can't remember if you brought Carob or if you brought... I'm sure you brought one. But this is Carob. Super, super beautiful. Let's do... I'm running on time. Doesn't happen often. Let me shuffle that one out of the road. And shuffle demo number two in. Let's do this one too. Okay, so I always, whenever I work on a piece, I sand first, I strip it back, I paint, and then I finish with my timber. Um, the reason I do it that way is because it's easier to get paint off timber than stain off paint. Um, that makes sense. Yeah, that makes sense in my head. I hope that makes sense. Um, so I always... I always paint first. If I end up with paint on the timber, which most of the time I do, it's really, really, really easy to clean it up. And I'm going to show you. There's not too much. Oh, no, actually there is. <laughs> there's not heaps on it, but there's a little bit. I take a bit of sandpaper. Let me move my sponge for a second. Spray bottle. Wet it a little bit. You don't need heaps wet. Let me grab a cloth, which is my tea towels, my poor tea towels for the shop, I've taken a beating. Uh, is there some at the front? I didn't look. Yeah, there is. Okay. Let me point you down. I'm going to show you what I do. Okay. Paint just here. Wet sponge. This is the chalk paint. Um, I haven't actually tried this with the silk finish, I don't think. Or have I? I don't know. I can't remember. Um, but I know this works with a chalk paint. This is what I always, always do. Sandpaper, I've got a sanding sponge, whichever you prefer. You don't want it too coarse, but you want it coarse enough that it's going to take it off. So don't go in with a thousand grit, you're never going to get it off. Sandpaper, it's damp, it's not soaking, but there's like enough that it's coming off on my fingers. And then what this does, by using the water, it reactivates that paint. And just like that, it's come off straight away. If this wasn't wet, I'd be sanding for a few more minutes, okay? So it takes that paint off super, super easily. Again, over on this side. So just here, I'm gonna wet that a little bit more. You don't want it soaking. 
but you want enough on there that it will come straight off. Because I always, I paint pieces like this upside down and this lip underneath here I've painted and when I've come up and sometimes when I've done that as well, I've accidentally got the top, okay? I find this much easier to do than to try and patch up my paint after I finish painting. I absolutely hate patching paint after I finish painting. It drives me nuts, so I always try to um, do it like this. Now, like before, this is wet, not a big deal. I can still stain over it, so I don't necessarily have to wait for it to dry. Um, let's do all of it because I'm going to stain this one for you as well. Oh no, this side's not too bad. Just a little bit. I should have done this before, but I'm glad that I get to show you what I'm doing. I do like to show my process. A little bit just here on the top. Again. It just takes it off so much faster. And along this back as well, it gives this a really nice, clean, sharp edge as well. I do like to have a sharp edge. Um, for bedside tables, I pretty much always paint the back of them. It's rare that I don't for like a larger sideboard though. Unless there was a reason for it not to be, I generally, or to be, um, say a customer's asked for it, I generally don't paint the backs of them. Again, it's up to you. This side, oh, ooh, good thing they're small. <laughs> Just here. Again, this has started to dry, so you can see it's taking a little bit more. But it's just the easiest way to quickly get that um, paint off. And because this is the chalk paint, it comes off super, super fast. Okay, pop that out of the road. Wipe off any remainder. How do we look? Pretty good. All right, let's turn it around without knocking everything out. All right, let's stain it. So that's how easy um, the actual prep is for um, getting it ready to stain once you've done all your painting. So I'll then seal this later with my wax. It's not a big deal that I haven't already. Um, so, right. Sometimes my brain goes too fast or my mouth goes too fast and something can't keep up with the other. Sponge. Uh, oh, sorry, <laughs> spray bottle, sponge. Just because they're sitting for a couple of minutes, just a very, very light spray. Now, um, remembering my paint on this one is uh, still raw, so it has not been sealed. You don't, I don't wanna accidentally get spots of spray on my paint with the chalk paint, it will leave water marks. Um, so you don't wanna accidentally over spray. So just sort of spray it on the top, doesn't matter if you get it on the timber. Just be careful of your paint, okay? Lightly wet, again with our sponge. You don't need loads and loads and loads. And I've used on these two, maybe, I don't know, five mil of stain. You're really not gonna use a lot. You can come in and do more coats if you want to get more opacity. It is completely up to you. Um, or again, you can thin it with water. You can actually decant and thin it if you're looking for um, a lighter finish than what, than what it will come out as from the blah, 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 then what it will come directly out of the jar. That still didn't make great sense, but I apologize. <laughs> if you've got any questions, if there's anything that you ever want to see, please don't hesitate to message me and ask. I am so giving with my knowledge and I want you guys to have the best experience possible with the products. Um, and I'm always happy to answer questions. So don't hesitate to send me a message, post in comments, send me an email. Um, I now have a phone number, much to my disgust. <laughs> I don't do talking on the phone. It actually gives me a lot of anxiety. Um, but my husband's like, no, you cannot open your business without a phone number. So it's even out on the sign out front. And I've had a few of you already call me. <laughs> and it's a bit scary, I'll be honest. But I do have a phone number. So if you've got a question, though I don't love it, I will answer it. I will talk to you. Um, but messages, I do prefer messages and emails just because that way I can write the information down and you've got it in front of you to refer back to as well. So 
little bit of stain each time. Straight over your surface. And you will find this does dry quite quickly. But applying with the sponge, you're not going to get brush strokes either. You can apply this with a roller if you want to. Um, for all these, all my paint shells behind me, I actually did apply the stain. I, I applied driftwood to those. They're just pine uh, with a roller because there was so many of them. But it is, it's up to you um, how you apply it. If you've got a lot, a roller is a really easy way to do it. But a sponge, I find, I get the best finish. These are only six bucks. And right now they're 20% off, so whatever that equates to. I can't do maths in my head, I apologise. But for six bucks, and I've used this over and over and over again. They're really, really good quality. Uh, and you just rinse it out with water. If you're using it with all water-based products, which I am, just water. And I use the same sponge for my top coats, etc. as well. Okay, so just like that. Let's do these edges again. So you can see like as I've gone, it's brushed against it, not a big deal. And then we just sort of go back and forth. I think I just did that front edge, but I'll go over it again because I can't actually remember now. And then, oops, knocking into things. And this side here. If you go to my website, I have, each time I do a video, I do try to do the YouTube videos a bit, and actually the TikTok ones I can link across to, so that's why I've been doing those two, um, so that I can add them to, sorry, that's a motorbike. It's so loud here on this corner. Um, I've been doing them as well in the YouTube so that I can link them into the individual listings on my website so that you can see um, when you're looking at the products there, oops, that you can see the products and how to use them as well. So I'm just sort of going to lightly spray over it. Different technique this time to the last one. Still going to look the same. And I'm going to use that water just to sort of even out these edges. Just nicely and over on this side. Yeah, I'm only going to do one coat. I think this is the perfect colour against the reef. If you want to come in and do a second or a third or a fourth, if you feel the need, you can do as many coats as you like. There's um, no limits to what you can do. It will come down to if you are staining. Um, eventually, the timber's not going to take any more stain. So that stain's just going to be sitting on the top. Just be aware of that. But you can do as many coats as you like. There's no limitations at all. But there we go. So that's two bedsides done in about, it's been about half an hour, but really if I was doing these, just getting them done, they'd take all of 10 minutes to stain. Um, and then to oil them. The other ones, the other one's not dry enough yet. I'll see if it's dry enough. Um, you need to give it about four hours. So I'm going to be here till 12 today. But I'll see what it's like before I leave. And if it's okay, I'll tilt you up because I feel like you're talking to a table at the moment or I'm talking to nothing. Um, if it's dry enough when I, before I go, I will jump on again and I will do a live showing the wet sanding. Super easy. You just need hemp oil and a thousand grit sandpaper. Okay, so if I'm, I'll see what it's feeling like. If it's not, um, I'm here tomorrow anyway, so I'll do it then, okay? So, Pure Eco Stain and Glaze, very easy to use. The colour that I have used is Carob. That's the pot. You can see I have barely used any at all. Um, very, very easy to use. If you have not used it, if you have not tried it, give it a go. Uh, it's available in seven colours. You can even mix the colours and create your own custom colours. I've mixed it with some paint as well. You can mix the white, uh, which is Whisper with paint if you're looking to create your own custom and there is also i think it's four other colors that are special order on my website um there's a pink i think there's two blues and i think oh hang on was it a pink or a red no there's a pink there's a red and there's two blues i don't know they're on my website they're on, on the same listing so you can special order as well um but our sale ends midnight tonight it is 20 percent off site-wide excluding our um, featured artists. 
but everything else, all the paints, all the finishes, where I've got loads of stock. I've got more stock arriving tomorrow. Unfortunately, our um, because it was public holiday yesterday, uh, not yesterday, Friday, and I didn't realise our poor TNT driver. <laughs> I couldn't live with them. So all the stocks arriving tomorrow. I'm here. I'm packing your orders today for my locals. I am here. 10 to 12 at 37 High Street, Eagle Hawk. I hope I can see some of you today, um, but I'm here regardless, so I figured I may as well open. If you have any questions, please do not hesitate to ask. I am always happy to help. Um, I'd prefer you to have the right knowledge behind you then to sort of go in and flounder and not sure what you're doing and, and potentially stuff it up and, and waste your time. Um, so if you do have a question, nothing's too stupid. Don't worry, um, I'm more than happy to help you. Have a absolutely wonderful Sunday. For those of you in lockdown, I'm thinking of you all. And um, yeah, bye everyone. Thank you so much for watching. Bye guys.